There's been a lot of excitement and curiosity online about women in the sagas, or women in Norse society, particularly when we have new pop culture icons like Lagertha, Ragnar Lothbrok's wife, from the TV show Vikings. People seem particularly interested in the idea of female warriors, like her character, and there's always a lot of conversation on social media when an archaeological discovery seems to back up these ideas that women were just as competitive and tough as the men. I met Johanna Katrin Fredriksdottir, lecturer of medieval studies at Yale University. She is the author of a book called Women in Old Norse Literature, Bodies, Words and Power, and has continued to study gendered portrayals. She will share her insights about sex, gender and women's roles in feud and magic with us. The sagas are extremely concerned with sex and gender, um, and I think that even if they don't have words for sex and gender and all these uh, labels that we use now, they um, seem to be thinking about, about these categories quite a lot, and whether um, your behavior as a man or a woman is dependent on nature, or, and to what extent it's um, about uh, the culture in which you live. Um, and so I I mean there are certain sexual um, categories that or, or uh, aspects of, of sex that you know humans will never get away from like giving birth and so on um, but they especially a saga like Njol's saga is totally obsessed with what is being a man. Some of the heroic poems that are the sort of the, the cultural background to the, the these sagas, they don't really have any problem with defining what a man is. So they know that a man is somebody who is uh, a warrior, who is brave, uh, who is able to physically dominate other men. Uh, he's virile, he dominates women sexually. Um, and he doesn't flinch in the face of death, and so on. Whereas um, in a saga like Njol's saga and some of the others, um, this idea of masculinity that um, makes, uh, you know, demands on men that they behave in a certain way that they might not actually want, um, and they kind of question it, or at least I think the author of the, the saga questions this idea. And, um, and the author of Lakstala saga, for example, um, questions the idea of what it is to be a woman um, quite quite intensely really um, I mean in in the sagas we sort of see women um, in the background a lot of the time they're not in the official sphere um, they're not doing most of the the politics and the power struggles and like they're they're definitely not in battles um, so um, they, they don't really have access to the legal system in the same way as, as men. Um, they are mostly, you know, doing food preparation and production. Uh, they're producing clothes and textiles. They're taking care of the household and so on. Um, and so I think that um, the author of Lux de la Saga has, has a woman actually saying, I want to go abroad and do what men do. And she's kind of put into place and it feels like the author thinks it's unfair that she didn't get to do these things. So uh, th there's just so much debate in the sagas um, about what it is to be a man or a woman and it, it seems that they, they don't um, necessarily accept that there's, there's a correlation between your organs and your DNA uh, and th then your gender role and, and how you behave.